I was astounded by this tweet by a sports information director at OU, Mike Houck. It sent me thinking about Genghis Khan and college football and this idea of dynastic excellence in my favorite sport. He said, the season outlook in the 2019 OU football media guide was five pages. The season outlook in OU's 1956 media guide was one word. Good. Period. That team went 10-0, and won a national title, outscored Texas, Notre Dame, Nebraska, and Oklahoma A&M, now known as Oklahoma State, 192-6. to <laughs> So Bud Wilkinson is responsible for building the monster that we know as OU football and really giving the state its birthright, something other than what it was originally meant for, which was to put people that the United States government did not think were worth a damn. And from that, you put a bunch of angry Okies together and went and conquered football. 47 straight wins for Bud Wilkinson Sooners. It's still the longest stretch of wins in the sports history. Pales in comparison, though, when you're talking about, say, Power Memorial, when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was there, where they went 71 games without a loss. And, of course, UCLA Bruins and on it goes. And I'm thinking about LSU, and I'm thinking about Clemson and Alabama and Ohio State and how these teams have been so very good, right? We were talking about just six months ago, Clemson having an opportunity to go back-to-back 30-0, and and people were really getting scared that they were going to challenge OU for that winning streak record. We even had columns written about it. I'm going, ain't no way. And then LSU put an end to that. But now LSU gets to look and say, we haven't lost a game since January, or excuse me, since November 25th, 2018, when they lost that thriller, 74-72, to Texas A&M. So they've gone more than a calendar year now without a loss. They'll face UTSA to start the season. Then they get Texas, where they'll probably get tested. But right now, they're basically 16-0. and Right, Clemson 29-1. and Ohio State takes an L in the Fiesta Bowl, but they will get back to playing outstanding regular season football. But even as we talk about them, and we talk about Alabama, and how many championships Nick Saban has won since returning there, and how he's done this at LSU and at Bama, how both Alabama and LSU put a bunch of kids into the NFL draft. Matter of fact, between the two, we're talking about more than 30 dudes, right? But check it. None of them is dynastic in the way that you might think of dynastic or the way that we actually should think of dynastic. And for that, take a look at what Genghis Khan did. In 25 years, the Mongol army subjugated more lands and people than the Romans had conquered in 400 years. Genghis Khan, together with his sons and grandsons, conquered the most densely populated civilization of the 13th century. Whether measured by total number of people defeated the sum of the countries annexed, or by the total area occupied. Genghis Khan conquered more than twice as much as any other man in history. The hooves of the Mongol warriors' horses splashed in the waters of every river and lake from the Pacific Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. At its zenith, the empire covered between 11 and 12 million contiguous square miles, an area about the size of the African continent and considerably larger than North America, including the United States, Canada, Mexico, Central America, and the islands of the Caribbean combined. It stretched from the snowy tundra of Siberia to the hot plains of India, from the rice paddies of Vietnam to the wheat fields of Hungary, and from Korea to the Balkans. The majority of people today live in countries conquered by the Mongols. On the modern map, Genghis Khan's conquest included 30 countries with well over 3 billion people. The most astonishing aspect of this achievement is that the entire Mongol tribe under him numbered around a million, smaller than the workforce of some modern corporations. From this million, he recruited his army, which was comprised of no more than 100,000 warriors, a group that could comfortably fit into the largest sports stadium of the modern era. 
In American terms, the accomplishment of Genghis Khan might be best understood if the United States, instead of being created by a group of educated merchants or wealthy planters, had been founded by one of its illiterate slaves, who by the sheer fierce force of his personality, charisma, and determination, liberated America from foreign rule, united the people, created an alphabet, wrote the Constitution, established universal religious freedom, invented a new system of warfare, marched an army from Canada to Brazil, and opened roads of commerce in a free trade zone that stretched across the continents. On every level and from any perspective, the scale and scope of Genghis Khan's accomplishments challenged the limits of imagination and taxed the resources of scholarly explanation i submit to you when tu wins 120 football games straight and its athletic director and head coach are synonymous with generating the most money establishing all of the ncaa records and quietly takes over an nfl draft having between 12 and 22 players selected each and every year for a decade then we might begin to even think about college football coach or a college football team getting close to what Khan achieved. Until then, please do not confuse Dabo Sweeney, Ed Orgeron, Lincoln Riley, Ryan Day, or any other college football coach with something like Dynasty. It's all cyclical. There's more parity in this sport than you think, even as we're trying to make it even more egalitarian.